Hi. Okay. Hi. Hi, everyone. I think um, we'll we'll begin. And as we also um begin, um, we still uh, as the rest are still being admitted, I think we just start first so that we don't uh, hold up the rest of you who have um, come in early and, and actually spend the time ready waiting for us. Okay, so as we begin today, welcome, welcome everyone again to LISS 2021. Um, it's been really great um, having everyone for the past few weeks and coming together as, as really this um, body of Christ to really experience um, and grow in our faith um, together. So as you begin today, um, I'm Antius. Um, I'm from SALT, uh, a young adult community in um, Sakura itself. And um, I'll be your MC for today. So as we begin again, once again, please um, turn on your cameras if possible. Um, I understand just now uh, some of you said you were driving. And so if it's convenient with you, please do turn on your cameras so that this can be a really a personal experience for each of us to really see each other and, and really encounter and attend this session together. I mean, it was great seeing everyone last week also during the mass um, for those who were able to make it. And it's, it's amazing just seeing everyone finally face to face. And I think for all those there, it was really a blessing to be able to see everyone there. Okay, so um, without further ado, um, let us begin with a prayer to really welcome the Holy Spirit. We welcome the, the God to really be in our spaces, in our prayer spaces, wherever we are. And, and um, then have the worship team and the sessionist to, to take us for the rest of the day. So uh, let us bless ourselves in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So dear God, um, we praise you and thank you a lot for this week that we had. For all the occasions that you have blessed us with for all the occasions that you have been present with us, whether we see it or we don't, Lord. We thank you and we praise you for all that, Lord God. And as we begin today, Lord, we thank you for the experiences that you have given to us, for us being able to encounter you, for being that personal God that comes down to be present with us. So dear Lord, I ask you to come into our prayer spaces, into this personal space that we have, Lord as we set aside this time to be with you, to hear your word and to worship you, may you be with us, may you minister to us and may you speak to us, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. So as we begin today, I think um, I'll firstly introduce the worship team. Um, from St. Ignatius and St. Francis Xavier Church. So um, I think you already know them. So um, over to you. And um, yeah, thank you. Hello, everyone. Good evening and welcome. Would like to wish everyone peace and love of Christ. And um, of course, welcome to the final session of LISS 2021. So again, I would like to intro um, our worship team. We are a combined praise and worship uh, from Church of St. Egi, St. Ignatius, and St. Francis Xavier. I am Nina, together with me, Raymond on guitar, Lydia on piano, Adi on bass, and in the background, we have Karen on slide sharing, Rajesh, our sound tech, as well as Rod as our backup sound tech. So today mark our final LISA session for this year, 2021. It's a mixed feeling, simply because I, I myself, I'm going to miss the talk. Um, the sharing session with my group and of course no more notification on Google cal Calendar reminding me about LISS on Friday. <laughs> um, and it's a sweet feeling because I think each of us, um, or for me at least, on a journey together growing in the spirit, um, praise the Lord, gain new friendship throughout the journey and knowing and understand that this is not the end but truly a brand new chapter in life in the spirit as a body of Christ. So before going straight to praise and worship, let's together quieten our heart and feel the presence of God with us here with an opening prayer for praise and worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Father, we thank you for everyone gathered here now. We thank you that you promise us that where two or three are gathered, you are there in the midst. 
Thank you that you know each of us by name and have caused us to walk with you. As we surrender ourselves in praise and worship, we ask that you would come by your Holy Spirit and inspire our hearts today. Come fill our lives with your love. Fill our conversation with your grace and truth. Fill this LISS meeting with your presence. We invite your beautiful Holy Spirit to move freely among us today and always. Lord, we ask that you would open our ears so that we may hear your voice. Open our minds so that we may receive your eternal wisdom. Open our spirit so that we may know your leading and guidance. And open our hearts so that we may receive your wonderful love. We ask all this in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So, let us gladly give God our all, praise Him, and glorify Him. Let us come before Him with a song. What great, what great goodness He has shown to us because His love is truly, truly forever.
brothers and sisters in Christ, um, you know, Christianity is a religion of joy. Real joy comes from God who has invaded us, conquered us, and liberated us, liberated us from eternal death and sadness. Also, who has given us hope and joy because He poured out His love within our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom He has given us. And yes, in Christ alone, our hope is found because He is our light and our strength. And with the power of Christ, we stand. alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song his cornerstone his solid ground firm to the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are still when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand.
Jesus, thank you for your amazing power and work in our life. Thank you for your goodness and for your blessing over us. Thank you that you are able to bring hope through even the toughest times, strengthening us for your purposes. Thank you for your great love and care, your mercy and grace. Thank you that you're always with us and will never leave us. And thank you for your presence because your presence is heaven to us.
we adore you, Jesus. We love you. We bow down. We worship you. Because you're the King of kings. Because you're Alpha and Omega. Because you are love. Because you're the King of kings. You are the God that won't abandon us, Lord. We love you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we would like to end this um, um, the first part of uh, present worship with glory be glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end Amen over to you MC Amen okay thank you thank you Anina I think uh, before uh, I introduce the next speaker I think um, Thank you very much. It was very spirit-led and spirit felt. I, I really felt the presence of the spirit with me. Um, I think as I introduced Jaina, who is the coordinator of Sakra, I think can we all just uh, raise our hands wherever we are towards him to really just say a prayer for him as we, we pray for him um, before this session. I invite all those who can pray in the spirit and the language of the Holy Spirit to pray. So, dear Lord, we ask you to come upon Jaina. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for his heart of service, Lord, his heart that you have put into him, Lord, to serve you, to really come to hear and to really bless us with his presence. We thank you, Lord, for using him in your ministry. And as he speaks to us today, Lord, I ask you, Lord, that you put your words in him. May he speak truly of your wisdom, of your knowledge, Lord. And may his words really speak to each and every one of us individually and personally, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So come, Lord, and use him, Lord, as you will, Lord, and just 
may your spirit just flow with every word that he speaks. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, let me introduce to you uh, Brother Jainav here, who is the coordinator of Sakra. Um, he's actually also a member of this um, a charismatic community called the International Catholic Charismatic Community, known as the Community of the Risen Lord. And he, he and his family actually started um, a chapter of this community locally when they migrated here 25 years ago to Singapore. And they have conducted numerous um, public retreats here. Um, also, um, the, life, the, the life-changing retreat known as the four-step retreat. Um, and he has actually been serving very long and he started as a teenager and he has been serving for 45 years now in the charismatic renewal. And I think um, we have really been blessed with his presence as coordinator of Sakura, as well as um, to be able to hear this session from him. So um, let us welcome now um, Brother Jainaf um, to speak to us on growing in the spirit. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, NTS. Just give me two minutes so that I can share my screen. Okay, I'm going to grow on you. Praise the Lord. So today's theme is uh, growing in the spirit. Now, I have a problem with this term growing in the spirit. I prefer to call it uh, living in the spirit. Uh, why is that? So when you say growing in the spirit, uh, it implies that if you don't grow, you will remain at this level, which is not true. Living in the spirit is a better word than I think. If you don't live in the spirit, you fall back into living in the flesh. And when you live in the flesh, you regress to back to where you were before you came to the Life in the Spirit seminar. So for me, growing in the spirit is actually living in the spirit. So before I start, let me share a rhetorical statement with you. It is God who ignites the fire, but it is up to us to keep the fire burning. Tonight, I'm going to share with you a few tips on how to keep the fire burning. I'm also going to share with you some aids that Sakral itself has formed to help you to keep the fire burning. So when I was asked to share this talk, uh, 150 things went, in, went through my mind. Uh, I had just been looking at a follow-up talk that our community was giving, and I wanted to grab that talk and share the same talk with you. But then there was this thought that fell into my head, which wouldn't go away. It was as though the Lord was telling me, tell them your story. Tell them what happened in your home. Tell them about the miracle that happened in your home when you were baptized in, your, in the spirit. Tell them about the lessons you learned through what I did in your family when, when you were baptized, after you were baptized in the Holy Spirit. So my brothers and sisters, at the risk of boring you, I'm going to share my story with you. So just as Antius shared with you, uh, my journey goes back 45 years. I encountered the Lord in the experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit when I was a 15-year-old kid. I didn't understand much. I didn't, I couldn't explain, I couldn't explain what really happened to me. But all I can tell you is that Jesus came alive to me. All this time, God was a concept. He was up there and I was down here. He was a little hard of hearing. So whenever, whenever I had to pray, I had to pray really hard because maybe God was old and he was hard of, hard of hearing. Uh, that's what I, what I thought. But 
when I went through this experience, Jesus came alive to me. He would give me joy. I would have much joy while praying. And I would have much, and when I read the scripture, the scripture came alive to me. So all this happened when my mother and I attended a series of talks like you did uh, when you followed the Life in the Spirit seminar. So this was way back in 1976. Uh, no one really knew about the charismatic renewal. We didn't even have a proper name for the talks. And uh, we used to call them Bible classes. And my mother and I went, and I can assure you, my life changed through that. 45 years later, when I look back on my life, the experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit was a life-changing occurrence in my life. Not only did it change my life, it changed my mother's life. Before I tell you about my mother, I have to tell you about my brother. My brother was a confirmed atheist. You know, my family was very close to the church. My father was the bishop's lawyer. And I believe that my grandfather donated land to build churches. So we were very close to the church. But my brother, he became an atheist. He was not an ordinary atheist. He was an intellectual. He uh, and uh, he uh, he dis he made a conscious decision to be an atheist. And I remember he and his roommate, when they were in university, would go to church on weekends and catch hold of a young boy who would who would be walking towards church, call him, and convince that boy that no God existed. And then they would walk back, clapping their hands, doing this and saying, uh, another soul saved. So now my brother, uh, not only was he an atheist, he had a huge problem with drinking. And by the age of 21, he was used to drink so much that his heart used to miss a beat every now and again. And he was a very heavy smoker and he terrorized our home. Uh, and I can remember my mother, she had to bring a cigarette and a cup of coffee to his bedside table every morning. That's who he was. Now my brother began to notice a change in us, especially in my mother. My mother was a number one complainer. She would complain about anything and everything. And uh, and so much so that we thought that we were the most unfortunate family on the earth. And uh, it was only much later that I realized that, uh, that we actually had things much better than, than, than most others. But my mother, who used to complain, now when she's sleeping the floor, she would be singing, I just keep trusting my Lord. And she would have joy. And uh, so my brother, so my, so my, uh, uh, Brother, brother noticed this change and he, he was curious about what happened. And he started following up and there was this nun who actually conducted the talks. She also followed him up and brought him to the talks. Now, when they, when they prayed over him for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, something happened. He says, that his heart was filled with a sense of love. And in his heart, he knew God existed. His head was telling him, there is no God. But his heart was telling him, there is a God and he's loving you. He's holding you now. And my brother, my sister, that night, he converted from atheism to faith. I remember he had a packet of cigarettes in his pocket that night. He took the packet, squeezed it, and he threw it to a drain. And he gave up smoking that night. And not only did he give up smoking, when he came back home, God came alive to him. And he's, he, he, said, he says that he was wondering whether he was going mad because 
He says that when he's bathing, he feels that God is looking at him and smiling. When he's walking, when he sees the trees, he feels that God is speaking to him and God is close to him. And, uh, and uh, he, he had a real experience of God's, of God's love. Now, one day, somebody gave him a gift of a Bible. And, uh, and uh, in, the, in this Bible, I can still remember this Bible. It was a revised standard version, which had illustrations all over. So he got this gift of this Bible, and he took the Bible and he opened it. And it fell onto chapter 5 of the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. And in that, it said, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. It hit him at once. Because although he had experienced God, although God became real to him, although he had been able to give up smoking, he was too attached to drinking. He still continued to drink. And uh, when he read those words, he suddenly realized that God was asking him to give up drinking. That day, he gave up drinking. One day he went, two days went, two days became three days, three days became four days, one week, two weeks, three weeks. Lalit was not drinking. Now, while this was happening, uh, we, we lived in a small town about eight hours away from Colombo. And uh, he had to go to Colombo. And, uh, and that day, uh, there, one of my cousins had a birthday party. Now the talk of the family was that Larit has given up drinking. So everybody would come and say, oh, so you're not drinking. So I heard you have given up drinking. And even if he wanted to drink, he couldn't drink because everybody was saying that uh, he had given up drinking. But then one person came to him and said, uh, you know, you have given up drinking. Why don't you take a beer? Uh, beer, it doesn't matter, right? So he took, he took one beer. One beer became two beers. Two beers became three beers. Three beers became four beers. And after four beers, he was hitting the bottle again. He drank through the entire night. And the following, and the following morning, he was coming back. He's saying that now he's seen double. He's so drunk that he's seen double. And he had to close one eye to walk on the road. And while he's walking like this, he hears a voice in his heart. Go to church. Go to church. Go to church. Now, he's saying himself, this was all an illusion. I was hoodwinked. There is no God. But still the voice is persisting. Go to church. Go to church. Go to church. So he because this voice was so persistent, he was passing a church and he, got, he went into the church and he sat in the last pew. And usually he asks when he's sharing his testimony, what sort of a prayer should a drunkard say? You get prayers to, to bless cars. You get prayers for sick people. You get prayers for old people, but you don't get prayers for drunkards. So he knelt in the last pew and he put his head on the pew. He didn't know what to pray. And while he was doing that, this thought dropped into his head. The thought said, Lalit, do you think I loved you because you gave up drinking? Even if you were the worst drunk in the world, I would still love you. My brothers, my sisters, that day, that word liberated him from his addiction to drink. It is now 45 years. He didn't touch a drink after that. Not only did he touch a drink, today he goes around the world preaching the word that he learned that day in the church. He goes preaching and saying, 
come as you are god loves you anyway you don't have to change to come to him if you come to him he will change you my brother my sister that was the beginning of an amazing journey so my brothers and sisters the lord taught me many things through those events the first thing i learned was was from my mother you know from my mother i learned you don't have to preach you don't have to argue you don't have to try to convince a person to bring him to the lord if you live under the lordship of the right if you live under the lordship of jesus and you are filled with the spirit you can influence your environment you can influence your family my brother my sister today all my all my siblings have experienced the baptism of the holy spirit and we are serving the lord in different parts of the world and uh, if you remember last week father henry c also shared this in his sermon he said you not only there are two ways that you can evangelize one by preaching by sharing the word and the other by the way you live and that is what my mother did for us and not only not only is it that experience that like when i read through the scripture i found a similar incident if you look at the screen now it speaks about uh, it speaks about the blessed mother visiting elizabeth uh, after the annunciation so the blessed mother has now had an encounter experience there has been a divine encounter back in nazareth where the angel gabriel came and announced the birth of jesus and the blessed mother has gone and has gone and prayed and said let it be done unto me according to your word she surrendered she is under the lordship of the lord and the angel tells her the holy spirit will overshadow you she is filled with the spirit the holy spirit will overshadow you for nothing is impossible to god now the blessed mother who has surrendered to the lord who is under the lordship and who is filled with the spirit comes and speaks to elizabeth and saint luke records this like this when elizabeth heard mary's greeting the baby leapt in her womb and elizabeth was filled with the holy spirit what happened my brothers and sisters elizabeth was filled with the holy spirit and elizabeth starts prophesying and the key word for me is this when elizabeth heard mary's greeting can you imagine guess what the blessed mother would have said she says mary's greeting it must have been a mundane word like good morning or good evening or hello and that word impacted elizabeth it impacted the child in her womb and they were filled with the holy spirit so my brothers and sisters you don't have to preach you don't have to convince you don't have to argue if you live under the lordship of the lord and if you and if you are filled with the spirit your environment your family will be impacted the second lesson i learned about my brother he received a dramatic conversion experience he received he experienced the living presence of god he gave up smoking but still for all he carried the brokenness of drunkenness my brother my sister you may have been baptized in the holy spirit you may have experienced the presence of the lord in a powerful way but that doesn't mean your brokenness has disappeared you will you the life in the spirit seminar is only the beginning it is a journey of a lifetime where you will be moving from one glory to another where the lord will start 
picking up your brokenness one by one and healing you until the day you meet him face to face. Now, there were two things that I said. One seems to contradict the other. On one side, I told you that you have to live under the Lordship of Jesus. And the second I told you was that, that, uh, that no matter what you do, your brokenness can come and hijack you. At the crucial moment, it will come and undermine you. My brother, my sister, what do you do? In the handbook that we had given you, on page one, Oh, I can't see it now. Let me make the screen bigger. Uh, on the... 131. 131. There is a prayer called the miracle prayer. On the miracle prayer, whenever you fall, take this prayer. By heart this prayer. Read this prayer. Sir, come back to the Lord. Surrender your life to the Lord and be filled with the Holy Spirit once again. Maturity is when you maturity is when you spend more time in the spirit than in the flesh. Just give me one second. My computer got reset. Sorry about that. So, every time you fall, come back to the Lord. The third thing that I want to share, the third lesson, is the importance of the word of God. So when my brother was happily in the spirit as well as drinking, it was the word of God that directly spoke to him and informed him or he didn't know what the Lord expected of him. My brother, my sister, the word of God is a very, very important aspect of your life. Set apart some time every day to read the word of God. If you read the daily mass readings, in three years, you would have read the entire Bible. I don't have time tonight, but I would really, if I had the time, I would have gone through the scripture that's in here. We are people who had, people who had been disillusioned, people whose hope had been dashed, come and meet the Lord at Emmaus, and there the Lord opens their minds to the scripture. It's not just intellectual knowledge, but allow the Lord to teach you hidden wisdom that's hidden within the words. Over the next year, Sakra will be partnering with the Bible Apostolate and we, be, we are hoping to conduct several programs that will help you to read scripture as the word of God. And uh, I, I urge you, when the opportunity comes, join them. The, the last lesson that I want to share with you about is, so my brother actually, after he, after he read the scripture, he gave up drinking. But he was what you call, uh, what Alcohol Anonymous calls, a dry drunk. Although he gave up drinking, the desire to drink still remained in him. And he tried to control it, but when the circumstances were right, his brokenness got the better of him. But that day in that church, when he encountered the Lord, that day he was set free. A few weeks ago, can you remember, Leroy was sharing his experience. Leroy 
couldn't express anything without falling back into vulgarities. When he encountered the Lord, without him even realizing, vulgarities had left him. And uh, it was his friends that told him that, uh, that he had stopped using vulgarities. So my brother, my sister, the answer is not just self-control. The answer is an encounter experience. The more you encounter the Lord, the more he will heal you of your brokenness. So, of course, you get, you get, you get many forms of encounter experiences. For example, the sacrament of reconciliation, the Holy Mass, uh, those are all encounter experiences, encounter opportunities. Then we have prayer meetings. I, I can give you enough and more testimonies of people who care, how broken families came to prayer meetings and they encountered the Lord and they were, they were reconciled. And then we have, we have retreats, we have other events. All those are encounter opportunities. But for me, one of the crucial, crucial encounter experiences is personal prayer. The Gospel of St. Mark speaks about Jesus' daily routine. St. Mark says that Jesus would get up before the crack of dawn and he would climb the mountain to pray. And at crucial places, the Gospels tell us how Jesus climbed the mountain just before he, just before uh, he, uh, he encountered the woman caught in adultery. He, he came back, he came down from the mountain. While he was on the mountain, God taught him who God was. So much so that Jesus had a perspective of God that no one else in his time had. When he spoke about the, the Pharisee and the publican, he was sharing the heart of God. When he, when he, uh, when he, when he, when he broke the law to touch the leper, you know, it was against the law to touch a leper. But when the leper came and asked him, if you want, you can heal me. The gospels say that he touched the leper. He was revealing the heart of God. He was teaching people that God was not an angry king, a disciplinarian who was up there. He was telling them, God is a father who cares about you, who, who, who is concerned about you, who is a provider, who is a protector, and who wants to be involved in your life. And up in the mountain, on the, on the mountain, the Lord taught him who he was. Jesus derived his identity from there. You and I probably derive our identity from the social media. The people at that time also tried to tell him, tell Jesus who he was. Some would call him a carpenter. But for him, more than he was the son of Mary and Joseph, he was the son of God. He derived his identity from that. And not only did he derive his identity from them, the way he looked at people was different. I can remember in the scripture says this incident where the disciples see a blind man and, uh, and they ask him, Lord, how, who sin made this man blind? Was it his or his parents? And Jesus tells him, no. He is blind because he is going to, he's going to, he's going to, uh, he's going to proclaim the glory of God. And, uh, and uh, before the court of Pilate, when Pilate tells him, I have the power of life and death over him, he has a different perspective. He sees events differently because that is what his father taught him in personal prayer. So my brothers and sisters, today, when you go, when you go into uh, your group, I want, uh, when you go into your breakout groups, I want you to do one thing. Decide what time you're going to pray. Decide where you're going to pray. Decide how long you're going to pray. 
It doesn't matter what you do. Even if you count sheep when you're praying, that time, give it to the Lord. It belongs to the Lord. And when you go to your, when you go to your group, share with others what time you're going to pray. And, and the others will pray for you so that you will be able to, you will be able to be faithful to that because it's very important. And finally, I want to show you two pictures. The picture on the top is, uh, is a sea of Galilee. And the picture at the bottom is the Dead Sea. The Sea of Galilee is fed mainly by the river Jordan. Water flows into the Jordan from the uh, flows into the Sea of Galilee and water flows out of the Sea of Galilee. Because there's an inflow and outflow of water, it's actually a freshwater lake. And that is where the miracle of the, of the catch of fishes happened. And if you look at this picture, we'll see so much greenery around it. That place is teeming with life. Look at the picture at the bottom. That, that lake, that the sea, Dead Sea, is also, is also fed by the same river Jordan that feeds, that feeds the Sea of Galilee. But there is no outflow. Because of that, that becomes, that has become the saltiest, uh, saltiest body of water on the earth. It's so salty that no life can survive on that. Not even a germ can survive there. My brother, my sister, if you are one who just takes without giving, you will become like the Dead Sea. If you are one who receives and you serve out, you will become like the Sea of Galilee. Life will team around you. My brother, my sister, at Sakra, we have something called schools at Sakra, where we teach you, where we, where we help you, where we train you to minister to others. You don't have to go through the school of hard knocks, make mistakes and learn. We have made those mistakes and we have put it down into, into uh, teachings and formation so that you can learn from, you can learn things systematically. When the opportunity arises, take up the opportunity so that you will be able to serve, not just in your human, in your human ability, but serve in supernatural power. That when you, that like Moses, when he raised his hand, the Red Sea parted. That when you do a little thing, God will intervene and miracles will happen. So today I have invited uh, Oka, who, who, is, uh, who is heading schools at Sakra, to share with you uh, what's happening next year at schools at Sakra. And uh, to give you an opportunity uh, to act, to act, kind of whet your appetite for what's going to come. So over to you, Oka. Praise the Lord. And thank you very much, my brothers and sisters, for this opportunity for sharing my heart with you. Okay. Um, I hope you all can still see my screen. Yes, yes. Right, can okay, see. thanks. Yeah, so uh, thanks, Diana. Uh, so my name is Oka, um, and thank you for the opportunity to share a little bit about schools at Sakura. So I'm just going to share like about five minutes of what we are trying to do and some of the so-called formations that we are doing at Sakura, especially for those um, who are just like uh, experience life in the spirit seminar. Right. So um, I think for, for us, our vision, uh, I really like this letter that uh, actually Pope John Paul II wrote to the leaders of the renewal of the spirit in Italy at the time. Um, and one of the things that he mentioned is that one of the church urgent tasks today is actually formation. 
right? And and formation of the laity. Right? So um, you're all aware, like if you, uh, someone become a priest, they will attend this seminary, starting from the Council of Trent at that time, they started the seminary. And they have to go through like maybe like six years formations. Um, if you become an engineer, uh, you go through like four years to get your bachelor degree and maybe like some other qualifications. Um, how how much that we put in when we are serving God's kingdom as a as a as a lay persons? And I think that's something that we have to ponder about because I had this conversation with someone that sometimes we just like jump into the thing that we are serving. Um, and this is God's kingdom. Um, and I remember one of my brothers actually asked us, uh, we serve God and we have to serve him professionally. We have to serve him as best as we can. But sometimes I think we are lacking of that formations. And so, so the purpose and the aim of schools at Sakar is actually to provide that formations. And we hope that this uh, can be also an ongoing uh, formations uh, through the many things that Sakra is doing and school at Sakra is just like, one part in providing these ongoing formations, right? But I think formation also has a purpose. And, and one of the beautiful thing about that, uh, what Pope John Paul II says, actually the purpose of this formation is actually to discover your vocation, right? Where is your place uh, in the world? Where is your place in the church? And, and the reason that uh, we want to equip you or I want to be equipped as a lay person is so that I can fulfill my, my mission here on earth. Right, and sometimes we think like our work is the most important thing. Uh, that's why, like, we are preparing starting from school, PSLE, secondary, go to university. But maybe there is another more important, more important mission that we have in our life, and maybe that's about serving God's kingdom. Right. So I think I want to put that in perspective uh, of how important formation is because we are serving God and we are serving His mission, and His mission has an eternal consequences. Um, unlike our temporal job, for example, right? But when we do our job well, also we are part of serving these missions because we are contributing to the society, right? But in this context of school at Sakra, um, we have various schools, um, and especially this is related as you join uh, the charismatic prayer group or uh, many of the services that you are doing in the church, prayer meetings, prayer groups. And these are four of the schools that we normally open for everyone, not just those who are in the charismatic renewal. Uh, we have other, a uh, few other schools that is uh, sometimes more suitable for those who are called into healing or even like those who are already in the leadership. Um, but uh, these four schools is basically uh, is open for everyone. And um, this actually helps you when you started like beginning like your interest and if you have any certain interest and potential to serve in the various ministry uh, in the group. So for example, like uh, we have School of Present Worship. Uh, Martin Fernandez is actually leading the school. Uh, and we have two models for this. And basically, uh, Martin is actually giving information about the heart of worship, how should we worship, but also on how to lead a present worship, right? Um, and also what are the attitude and how uh, we can create the dynamics, how can we follow the Holy Spirit in, in leading people uh, to present worships. And we also have the School of Intercession. So uh, Maria is in charge for the School of Intercession. And uh, as you are aware now, everywhere, I think the Archbishop is like really emphasizing a lot on intercessions. At the end of the day, it is about the power of prayer. So I think it's very important that we all know uh, how to pray and how to intercede. And throughout this Catholic 200 SG, also the Arsda is like organizing intercession. Um, Sakra is teaching a prophetic intercessory uh, and how we actually like discern uh, what is actually at the heart of God. And so we intercede not just according to my wish list, but also we intercede according to God's heart. And I remember Maria mentioned that to be an intercessor is to have a heart of Jesus because Jesus is our main intercessor. Um, so, so if any of you have the desire to pray, have the desire uh, to intercede, uh, to pray for someone, to bridge the gap uh, uh, for the needs of other people, um, you can actually join this uh, school of intercession. So they also talk a lot about uh, the different ways and how to activate the prophetic intercessory, how to exercise the charisms also in the context of intercessory prayer, um, about spiritual warfare as well um, in the school of intercessions. Um, 
School of Charisms, uh, Gerard Francesco is leading the School of Charisms. We have uh, two or three models for the School of Charisms. So uh, Gerard is helping us to understand more on the various charisms. And I think this is very important because one of the mission of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal is to open up uh, charisms for the whole church. And sometimes we, we only like pick and choose the charism that I like, the charism that I want, the charism that is suitable maybe for certain administrative staff. Um, but I think I think the, the one of the grace of the renewal is actually really to open up to, to whatever the charism that the Holy Spirit want us to do and, and how we can use it for evangelization. And I hope throughout all this LIS is also the many testimony on how when people exercise charism, um, actually it is God who is working and, and, and our evangelization effort can be very powerful and very impactful because it is God who is working through little instruments like you and me. Right. Uh, there's also a school of word proclamation. Uh, so Charles and Philip uh, is actually leading that one. We have like two modules starting in, uh, and this is also suitable for those who are giving talks, uh, how we actually proclaim the word of God. So we started with on how to prepare the session, how to discern the needs of your audience, and also how to prepare it, how to deliver it. There's also some feedback uh, one-to-one uh, with Charles and uh, on the later on, on the second model, actually, Philip talked more about hermeneutics on how you can interpret and extract the meaning from the scriptures. So I think it's very important because we want our preaching or our teaching is based on the scriptures and not just like on pop psychology or whatever it is, right? So um, these are uh, the four schools that are not only open for everyone. So even like some catechists, they attend uh, the School of Word Proclamations, some people from other group, they attend the School of Intercessions. And many people outside of the Charismatic Renewal, actually, they attend the School of Charisms. Um, because there is this desire, there is this need to, to exercise Charisms. And I think, I think for us, that's a great joy. Um, there are many groups these days, like doing present worships. So we are also open for those uh, who are interested in leading present worship, even uh, if they are not affiliated with Sakra. Right? So... So we, we open this course for everyone. And I think, uh, again, the idea is formations so that we know how to serve better so that we can fulfill our missions. And some people actually, they try a few of these schools so that they actually know where is their charism, where is their ministry that they are called uh, by the Lord. So I, I strongly encourage you also to, to try and this part of the discernment, uh, which ministry that uh, actually they are being called to. Um, so these are the short calendar that we are still planning so we have like some dates uh, and i think once it is nearer usually we announce it in our facebook page so we begin actually the year with the school of charism so if any of you are interested uh, after this live in the spirit statement on how uh, you want to know more about charisms and how to use it and how to activate it um, so uh, please do join the school of charism i think that's a really uh, nice course um, Gerard is very experienced. He's been doing this uh, for many, many years. Um, and also, School of Word Proclamation is coming on in February and March. I think that one is like after the Chinese New Year. Uh, so we make sure that uh, it's like around the end of February and also the first week of March. And then like in June, we have the School of Intercessory and the Module 2 for Word Proclamation. So Philip will do the School of Word Proclamations in June on hermeneutics on how to extract the meaning from the scriptural text. Uh, Maria will start the School of Intercessory in July, and also uh, Martin for the School of Present Worship also in August. So please uh, look at some of these things. Uh, and, and the important thing is that hopefully uh, we, you join the Facebook page because normally uh, Jessica, who is the administrator, uh, she usually post it in our Facebook page and together with the registration form as well. So if you are interested, uh, do follow the Facebook page and hopefully uh, we'll see you in some of our schools. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jayana, for allowing me to share. Thank you. Thank you, Oka. Um, I really like your background. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now over Zoom, you're always talking about who is the nicest background, right? <laughs> So, okay, so right now, um, thank you, Oka, for the sharing of schools, and um, definitely keep a lookout for the, 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 um, um, the schools and um, 
the invitations that that will come up on the Facebook page, and I do not know maybe by email itself. Um, so right now we're going to go to our breakout rooms, um, and uh, remember that uh, Jaina has actually mentioned to to actually commit to a time in our groups that we are going to um, commit to God for, that we're going to give to God and for Him to speak to us, for us to get to know Him better. So um, we're going to uh, wait for the Zoom uh, support to really break, break us out into groups and remember, um, decide on that time. Thank you. <laughs>